John Elliott was a Scottish officer of the Royal Navy who served during the Seven Years' War and the American War of Independence. He rose to the rank of Admiral, and served briefly as Colonial Governor of Newfoundland. Elliott was born into the gentry in Scotland, and entered the Navy. Little is known about his early service, but he received a promotion to post-captain during the Seven Years' War, and commanded the 32-gun frigate HMS Eolus with distinction, first capturing a small French frigate, and then taking command of a squadron of three ships and bringing to action the notorious privateer from a section Warthurot, who had been raiding the coast of Ireland in 1760. After a short but bitter engagement, Thurot was killed and his ships captured. Elliot was widely hailed as a hero and he and his captains received several rewards. He commanded several other ships during the remainder of the war, and after a period of unemployment during the peace, returned to active service during the American War of Independence. His service in this conflict involved carrying the members of the Carlisle Peace Commission to America, and playing a minor role in operations off the coast, before returning to European waters. He was present at the relief of Gibraltar and the Battle of Cape St. Vincent with Admiral Sir George Rodney, and saw action at the Battle of Ushant with Admiral Richard Kempenfelt. Promoted to flag rank after the end of the war he served as Governor of Newfoundland during the peace, but was unable to take any commands during the French Revolutionary Wars owing to his infirmity, and died in 1808 with the rank of Admiral. Family and Early Life Elliot was born in Scotland in 1732, the fourth son of Sir Gilbert Elliot, second baronet and his wife Helen. Little is known about his early life but he joined the Royal Navy after graduating from the Royal Naval Academy, Portsmouth in 1740, and went aboard HMS Augusta in July that year. From there he went to the hospital ship HMS Princess Royal, and after a period probably spent in the merchant service, Elliot served aboard HMS Chesterfield and HMS Assistance, and for two years aboard the sloop HMS Peggy. He passed his lieutenant's examination on May 1, 1752, though he did not receive a commission until April 30, 1756, when he joined HMS Scarborough. It was about this time that his brother, Gilbert Elliot, who had entered Parliament, became one of the Lords of the Admiralty, and so was able to speed his brother's rise through the ranks. John Elliot was promoted to commander on January 21, 1757 and then advanced to post-captain on April 5, 1757. His first appointment was to command HMS Hussar with the Channel Fleet, and he took part in the reconnaissance of Rochefort in early 1758. In November 1758 he was appointed to the newly launched 32-gun HMS Eolus. On March 19, 1759, while sailing off Brittany in company with the 50-gun HMS Assis came across a squadron of four French corvettes escorting a convoy. While the convoy and two frigates fled, pursued by Assis, the remaining two French ships, the 36-gun Blonde and the 20-gun Mignon came up to prevent Eolus from following. Elliot fought an action with the Mignon, capturing her after a hard-fought engagement, though Blonde escaped. The battle cost Mignon the lives of her commander, and many of her crew, with the second captain and 25 men being wounded. Eolus a Euro Euro's casualties amounted to two or three men wounded. Elliot spent the rest of the year cruising off the French coast with Sir Edward Hawke's fleet, and on December 27 sailed on a cruise from Quiberon Bay with a 64-gun HMS Intrepid. The ships were caught in bad weather, and on being unable to reach the appointed rendezvous point of Groix, and with provisions running low, Elliot made instead for Kinsale to resupply, putting in there on January 21, 1760. He remained trapped there by the weather, and while waiting for the opportunity to sail again a letter reached him from the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, the Duke of Bedford, asking for assistance. The French privateer from a section Warthurot had landed near Carrickfigus with several ships and had occupied the town. The letter had been sent to all the ports in the hopes of there being ships available to intercept the French, but no ships were stationed on the coast, and only by chance was Elliot at Kinsale. Also there sheltering from the weather were the 36 gunships HMS Brilliant and HMS Pallas. Defeating Thurot. Elliot rushed his ships to sea and arrived off Carrickfergus on February 26, but learnt that the French had already sailed. 
Elliot's force set off in pursuit, and caught up with them on February 28. The French force, consisting of the ships Mara Copyright Chal de Belle Isle, Terpsichore and Blonde, were brought to battle off the Isle of Man at nine in the morning. After a close-fought action, Thurot's force was battered into submission, with his ships dismasted and reduced to a sinking condition. Thurot was hit by a musket ball and died during the action, with his body being thrown overboard. Around 300 of the French had been killed or wounded, while British losses amounted to four killed and 15 wounded on Eolus, one killed and five wounded on Pallas and eleven wounded on Brilliant. Thurot's body was washed ashore at Port William and was buried with full military honours at Kirkmaiden. Among the possessions found on him was a tobacco box of chased silver and engraved with his name, which was presented to Elliot by Sir William Maxwell, who arranged Thurot's funeral and acted as chief mourner. Elliot and his captains received the thanks of both the Westminster and Irish Houses of Parliament, and the freedom of the city of Cork. Elliot's cousin, Thomas Parsley was serving on Eolus during the battle, and having distinguished himself in the fighting, was promoted to lieutenant of the ship. Both Blonde and Terpsichore were taken into the Royal Navy, while on Elliot's return to Spithead, he was presented to King George II. Songs were written about the battle and images and depictions of it were widely distributed. Years later, in 1804, Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson wrote a letter to John Elliot's nephew, then Lord Minto. I beg you will present my respects to Admiral Elliot. I have had the honor of being introduced to him twenty-two years ago, but never had the pleasure of serving with him. But his action with Thurot will stand the test with any of our modern victories. Last years of war, Elliot further distinguished himself by cutting out a French brig laden with naval stores from under the guns of a French shore battery at Bellala on May 17, 1760. Eolus was badly damaged during the action, and returned to port to be repaired. While these were being carried out it is possible that Elliot was temporarily appointed to command the 44-gun HMS Gosport, aboard which he escorted an outward-bound merchant convoy headed to the Baltic. However, Elliot's records are often confused with those of Captain John Elliot, who may have commanded Gosport instead. With this service completed, and repairs on Eolus being finished, Elliot resumed command of her, and spent 1761 cruising in the Bay of Biscay. He captured a four-gun French privateer named Carnival on March 23, and brought her into Spithead. On his arrival there he was appointed to command the 70-gun HMS Chichester. He spent the rest of the war in command of Chichester, going out to the Mediterranean in the later stages with Sir Charles Saunders's fleet, but they did not see any action. American War of Independence, left without a ship after the peace in 1763, Elliot did not return to active service until 1767, when he was given command of the 60-gun HMS firm, one of the Plymouth guardships. He also briefly became Member of Parliament for Kirkmouth that year. He was moved to the newly built HMS Portland on September 26, 1770, but left her the following year and received no further commissions until 1777, when he took command of the 64-gun HMS Trident during the American War of Independence. He had been elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in January 1776, during his time ashore. He was promoted to Commodore on April 11, 1778, and shortly afterwards took the Earl of Carlisle, George Johnston and William Eden to North America to negotiate with the colonists as the Carlisle Peace Commission. After arriving at Delaware Elliot joined Richard Howe's command and took part in the relief of Rhode Island. He left the Trident towards the end of 1778 and returned to England and a brief spell of unemployment until his appointment to command the 74-gun HMS Edgar in May 1779. It was about this time that he was made a Colonel of Marines, a post he held until 1787. Elliot went out with Admiral Sir George Rodney's fleet to relieve Gibraltar in 1780 and took part in the defeat of the Spanish fleet under Juan de Languera at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent on January 16, 1780. Edgar played a large part in the fighting, suffering casualties of six killed and twenty wounded, the third highest casualty figures of the British ships. Having temporarily relieved Gibraltar, Rodney took his fleet to the West Indies, but left Elliot and Edgar at Gibraltar to support the garrison there. 
Elliot soon found that there was little assistance that he could render, and having a ship as large as Edgar on station there made her a target for Spanish gunboats. Rodney was rebuked for leaving him there, as it was against his orders, and necessitated sending a frigate to order his return. Elliot consequently returned to England. Elliot spent most of the remaining years of the war commanding Edgar in the English Channel. In November 1781, the Admiralty had received intelligence that a large convoy was preparing to sail from Brest under Admiral de Guichen. It was a convoy of transports carrying naval supplies for the West Indies and the French fleet in the East Indies. Edgar was part of Admiral Richard Kemp and Felt's squadron of 18 ships, commanded from HMS Victory, which was ordered to intercept the convoy. Kemp and Felt did so in the afternoon of December 12 in the Bay of Biscay, approximately 150 miles southwest of Ushant. With the French naval escort to leeward of the convoy, Kemp and Felt attacked immediately, capturing 15 of the transports before nightfall. The rest of the convoy scattered, most returning to Brest. Only five transports reached the West Indies. During the engagement, known as the Battle of Ushant, Edgar fought a running battle with the 84-gun Triumphant. Elliot was later praised by Kemp and Felt for his actions during the battle. Elliot was moved into HMS Romney in June 1782, and there were plans to send him to the West Indies in command of a squadron of five ships of the line and a frigate, but the end of the war prevented this. Later years, again left unemployed by the peace, Elliot remained without a command until 1786, when he was appointed governor and commander-in-chief of Newfoundland. He fulfilled the post for its usual term, sailing out in June each year and returning in October, with his principal duties being the regulation of the fisheries. He was succeeded by a new commander, Vice Admiral Mark Milbank in 1789, having been promoted to Rear Admiral of the Red on September 24, 1787. He was further advanced to Vice Admiral of the Blue on February 21, 1790, and as tensions rose with the Spanish armament that year, Elliot hoisted his flag aboard HMS Barfleur, but with the easing of the crisis soon struck it. Increasingly infirm, he was promoted to Vice Admiral of the Red on April 12, 1794, after the outbreak of the French Revolutionary Wars, but was unable to take up any posts. He was promoted to Admiral of the Blue on April 16, 1795, and then to Admiral of the White. He settled at his estate at Mount Teviot, Roxburghshire during his last years and died there on September 20, 1808. He never married. His nephews included Thomas Parsley, William Cathcart, 1st Earl Cathcart and Admiral Robert Digby. Another nephew was Gilbert Elliot Murray Kynan Mound, 1st Earl of Minto, who inherited John Elliot's estates. Notes Citations References External links Biography at Government House The Governorship of Newfoundland and Labrador